Cheese from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. HTTP colon slash slash en dot wikipedia dot org. Cheese is a solid food made from the curdled milk of cows, goats, sheep, water buffalo, or other mammals. The milk is curdled using some combination of rennet or rennet substitutes and acidification. Bacteria acidify the milk and play a role in defining the texture and flavor of most cheeses. Some cheeses also feature molds, either on the outer rind or throughout. There are hundreds of types of cheese produced all over the world. Different styles and flavors of cheese are the results of using different species of bacteria and molds, different levels of milk fat, variations in the length of aging, differing processing treatments such as cheddaring, pulling, brining, or mold wash, and different breeds of cows, sheep, or other mammals. Other factors include animal diet and the addition of flavoring agents such as herbs, spices, or wood smoke. Whether the milk is pasteurized may also affect the flavor. Cheeses are often eaten on their own or cooked into various dishes. Most cheeses melt when cooked. For a few cheeses, the milk is curdled by adding acids such as vinegar or lemon juice. Most cheeses, however, are acidified to a lesser degree by bacteria, which turns milk sugars into lactic acid, followed by the addition of rennet to complete the curdling. Rennet is an enzyme traditionally obtained from the stomach lining of young cattle, but is now also laboratory produced. Substitute vegetable rennets have been extracted from various species of the Kynara thistle family. Section 1. History Cheese is an ancient food whose origins may predate recorded history. Probably discovered in Central Asia or the Middle East, cheese making spread to Europe and had become a sophisticated enterprise by Roman times. As Rome's influence receded, distinct local cheesemaking techniques emerged. This diversity reached its peak in the early industrial age and has declined somewhat since then due to mechanization and economic factors. Cheese has served as a hedge against famine and a good travel food. It is valuable for its portability, long life, and high contents of fat, protein, calcium, and phosphorus. Cheese is lighter weight, more compact, and has a longer shelf life than the milk from which it is made. Cheesemakers can place themselves near the center of a dairy region and benefit from fresher milk, lower milk prices, and lower shipping costs. Cheese's substantial storage life lets a cheesemaker sell when prices are high or when money is needed. Subsection 1. Origins The exact origins of cheesemaking are debated or unknown, and estimates range from around 8,000 BCE, when sheep were domesticated, to around 3,000 BCE. Credit for the discovery most likely goes to nomadic Turkic tribes in Central Asia, around the same time they developed yogurt, or to people in the Middle East. A common tale about the discovery of cheese tells of an Arab nomad carrying milk across the desert in a container made from an animal's stomach, only to discover the milk had been separated into curd and whey by the rennet from the stomach. Folk tales aside, cheese likely began as a way of preserving soured and curdled milk through pressing and salting, with rennet introduced later. Perhaps when someone noticed that cheese made in an animal's stomach produced more solid and better textured curds, the earliest archaeological evidence of cheesemaking has been found in Egyptian tomb murals dating to about the 24th century BCE. The earliest cheeses would have likely been quite sour and salty, similar in texture to rustic cottage cheese or feta. From the Middle East, basic cheesemaking found its way into Europe where cooler climates meant less aggressive salting was needed for preservation. With moderate salt and acidity, the cheese became a suitable environment for a variety of beneficial microbes and molds, which are what give aged cheese their pronounced and interesting flavors. Subsection 2. Classical Times Ancient Greek mythology credited Aristeus with the discovery of cheese. Homer's Odyssey, in the 8th century BCE, describes the Cyclops making and storing sheep's and goat's milk cheese. From Samuel Butler's translation, We soon reached his cave but he was out shepherding, so we went inside and took stock of all that we could see. His cheese racks were loaded with cheeses, and he had more lambs and kids than his pens could hold. When he had so done, he sat down and milked his ewes and goats, and then let each of them have her own young. He curdled half the milk and set it aside in wicker strainers. By Roman times, cheese was an everyday food and cheesemaking a mature art, not very different from what it is today. Calumella's De Rustica, circa 65 CE, details a cheesemaking process involving rennet coagulation, pressing of the curd, salting, and aging. Pliny's Natural History, in 77 CE, devotes a chapter to describing the diversity of cheeses enjoyed by Romans of the early empire. He stated that the best cheeses came from the villages near Nîmes, but did not keep long and had to be eaten fresh. 
Cheeses of the Alps and Apennines were as remarkable for their variety then as they are now. A Ligurian cheese was noted for being made mostly from sheep's milk, and some cheeses produced nearby were stated to weigh as much as a thousand pounds each. Goat's milk cheese was a recent taste in Rome, improved over the medicinal taste of Gaul's similar cheeses by smoking. Of cheeses from overseas, Pliny preferred those of Bithynia in Asia Minor. Subsection 3. Post-Classical Europe. Rome spread a uniform set of cheesemaking techniques throughout much of Europe and introduced cheesemaking to areas without a previous history of it. As Rome declined and long-distance trade collapsed, cheese in Europe diversified further, with various locales developing their own distinctive cheesemaking traditions and products. France and Italy are the nations with the most diversity in locally made cheeses today, with approximately 400 each. A French proverb holds that there is a different cheese for every day of the year, and Charles de Gaulle was once asked, how can you govern a country in which there are 246 kinds of cheese? Still, advancement of the cheese art in Europe was slowing during the centuries after Rome's fall. Many of the cheeses we best know today were first recorded in the late Middle Ages or after. Cheeses like cheddar, around 1500 CE, Parmesan in 1597, Gouda in 1697, and Camembert in 1791. In 1546, John Haywood wrote in Proverbs that the moon is made of a green cheese. Green refers here not to the color, as many now think, but to being new or unaged. Variations on this sentiment were long repeated. Although some people assume that this was a serious belief in the era before space exploration, it is more likely that Haywood was indulging in nonsense. Subsection 4. Modern Era The first factory for the industrial production of cheese opened in Switzerland in 1815, but it was the United States where large-scale production first found real success. Credit usually goes to Jesse Williams, a dairy farmer from Rome, New York, who, in 1851, started making cheese in an assembly line fashion using the milk from neighboring farms. Within decades, hundreds of such dairy associations existed. The 1860s saw the beginnings of mass-produced rennet, and by the turn of the century, scientists were producing pure microbial cultures. Before then, bacteria in cheesemaking had come from the environment or from recycling in earlier batches way. The pure cultures meant a more standardized cheese could be produced. Factory-made cheese overtook traditional cheesemaking in the World War II era, and factories have been the source of most cheeses in America and Europe ever since. Today, Americans buy more processed cheeses than real, factory-made or not. Worldwide cheese is a major agricultural product. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, over 18 million metric tons of cheese was produced worldwide in 2004. This is more than the yearly production of coffee beans, tea leaves, cocoa beans, and tobacco combined. Germany is the largest importer of cheese from France, the major exporter. Section 2. Cultural Attitudes Cheese is rarely found in East Asian dishes, as dairy products in general are rare. However, East Asian sentiment against cheese is not universal. Cheese made from yaks or mare's milk is common on the Asian steppes. The national dish of Bhutan, Emadatsi, is made from homemade cheese and hot peppers, and cheese is used in India, where paneer curries are popular. Even in China, cheese consumption is increasing, with annual sales more than doubling from 1996 to 2003 to a still small 30 million US dollars a year. Certain kinds of Chinese preserved bean curds are sometimes misleadingly referred to in English as Chinese cheese due to their texture and strong flavor. Strict followers of the dietary laws of Judaism and Islam must avoid cheeses made with the rennet from animals not slaughtered in a manner adhering to kosher or halal laws. Both faiths allow cheese made with vegetable-based rennet or with rennet made from animals that were processed in a kosher or halal manner. Many less orthodox Jews also believe that rennet undergoes enough processing to change its nature entirely and do not consider it to ever violate kosher law. As cheese is a dairy food under kosher rules, it cannot be eaten in the same meal with any meat. Many vegetarians avoid any cheese made from animal-based rennet. Most widely available vegetarian cheeses are made using rennet produced by the fermentation of fungus. Vegans and other dairy-avoiding vegetarians do not eat real cheese at all, but some vegetable-based substitute cheeses, usually soy-based, are available. Even in cultures with long cheese traditions, it is not unusual to find people who perceive cheese, especially pungent-smelling or mold-bearing varieties such as Limburger or Roquefort, as unappetizing, unpalatable, or disgusting. Food science writer Harold McGee proposes that cheese is such an acquired taste because it is produced through a process of controlled spoilage 
and many of the odor and flavor molecules in aged cheese are the same found in rotten foods. McGee notes, an aversion to the odor of decay has the obvious biological value of steering us away from possible food poisoning, so it is no wonder that an animal food that gives off whiffs of shoes and soil in the stable takes some getting used to. Section 3. Types of Cheese No one categorization scheme can capture all the diversity of the world's cheeses. There are some commonly used classifications. Subsection 1. Fresh for these simplest cheeses, milk is curdled and drained with little other processing. Examples include cottage cheese, Romanian cash, New Châtel, and fresh goat's milk chevre. Such cheeses are soft and spreadable with a mild taste. Fresh cheeses without additional preservatives can spoil in a matter of days. Whey cheeses are fresh cheeses made of the whey discarded while producing other cheeses. Ricotta, Romanian Erda, and Norwegian Gatos are examples. Traditional mozzarella also falls into the fresh cheese category. Fresh curds are stretched and kneaded in hot water to form a ball of mozzarella, which, in southern Italy, is usually eaten within a few hours of being made. Other firm fresh cheeses include paneer and queso fresco. Subsection 2. Distinctively aged. Soft ripened cheeses such as brie and camembert are made by allowing white penicillium candida or P. camemberti mold to grow on the outside of a soft cheese for a few days or weeks. The mold forms a white crust and contributes to the smooth, runny, or gooey textures and more intense flavors of these aged cheeses. Goat's milk cheeses are often treated in a similar manner, sometimes with white molds and sometimes with blue. Blue mold cheeses like Roquefort, Gorgonzola, and Stilton are produced by inoculating loosely pressed curds with Penicillium Roqueforti or Penicillium Glaucum molds. The mold grows within the cheese as it ages. These cheeses have distinct blue veins and often assertive flavors. Their texture can be soft or firm. Washed rind cheeses are periodically bathed in a salt water brine as they age, making their surfaces amenable to a class of bacteria, the reddish-orange smear bacteria, which impart pungent odors and distinctive flavors. Washed rind cheeses can be soft, such as Limburger, semi-hard, such as Munster, or hard, such as Appenzeller. Subsection 3. Other Categories Categorizing cheeses by firmness is a common but inexact practice. The lines between soft, semi-soft, semi-hard, and hard are arbitrary, and many types of cheeses are made in softer or firmer variations. Harder cheeses have a lower moisture content than softer cheeses. They are generally packed into molds under more pressure and aged for a longer time. The familiar cheddar is one of a family of semi-hard or hard cheeses, including Cheshire and Gloucester, whose curd is cut, gently heated, piled, and stirred before being pressed into forms. Colby and Monterey Jack are similar but milder cheeses. Their curd is rinsed before it is pressed, washing away some acidity and calcium. A similar curd washing takes place when making the Dutch cheeses Edam and Gouda. Swiss-style cheeses like Emmental and Gruyere are generally quite firm, the same bacteria that gives Emmental its holes contribute to their aromatic and sharp flavors. The hardest cheeses, grating cheeses, such as Parmesan, Pecorino, and Romano, are quite firmly packed into large forms and aged for months or years. Processed cheese is made from traditional cheese and emulsifiers, often with the addition of milk, more salt, preservatives, and food coloring. It is inexpensive, consistent, and melts smoothly. This is the most consumed category of cheese in the United States. The most familiar processed cheese may be pre-sliced mild yellow American cheese or Velveeta. Many other varieties exist, including Easy Cheese, a Kraft Foods brand sold in a spray can. Section 4. Health and Nutrition In general, cheese supplies a great deal of calcium, protein, and phosphorus. A 30-gram serving of cheddar cheese contains about 7 grams of protein and 200 milligrams of calcium. Nutritionally, cheese is essentially concentrated milk. It takes about 200 grams of milk to provide that much protein and 150 grams to equal the calcium. Cheese shares milk's nutritional disadvantages as well. The Center for Science and the Public Interest condemns cheese as America's number one source of saturated fat, adding that the average American ate 30 pounds of cheese in the year 2000, up from 11 pounds in 1970. Their recommendation is to limit their full-fat cheese consumption to 2 ounces a week.
Whether cheese's highly saturated fat actually leads to an increased risk of heart disease is called into question when considering France and Greece, which lead the world in cheese eating, yet have relatively low rates of heart disease. This seeming discrepancy is called the French paradox. The higher rates of consumption of red wine in these countries is often invoked as at least partial explanation. A number of food safety agencies around the world have warned of the risks of raw milk cheeses. The United States Food and Drug Administration states that soft raw milk cheeses can cause serious infectious diseases including listeriosis, brucellosis, salmonellosis, and tuberculosis. It is U.S. law since 1944 that all raw milk cheeses, including imports since 1951, must be aged at least 60 days. Australia has a wide ban on raw milk cheeses as well, though in recent years, exceptions have been made for Swiss Gruyere, Emmental, and Sprints, and for French Roquefort. Some say these worries are overblown, pointing out that pasteurization of milk used to make cheese does not ensure its safety in any case. This is supported by statistics showing that in Europe, where young raw milk cheeses are still legal in some countries, most cheese-related food poisoning incidents were traced to pasteurized cheeses. Pregnant women may face an additional risk from cheese. The United States Center for Disease Control has warned pregnant women against eating soft ripened cheeses and blue-veined cheeses due to the listeria risk to the unborn baby. Some studies claim to show that cheeses including cheddar, mozzarella, Swiss, and American can help to prevent tooth decay. Several mechanisms for this protection have been proposed. The calcium, protein, and phosphorus in cheese may act to protect tooth enamel. Cheese increases saliva flow, washing away acids and sugars, and cheese may have an antibacterial effect in the mouth. Cheese is often avoided by those who are lactose intolerant, but ripened cheeses like cheddar contain only about 5% of the lactose found in whole milk, and aged cheeses contain almost none. Some people suffer reactions to amines found in cheese, particularly histamine and tyramine. Some aged cheese contain significant concentrations of these amines, which can trigger symptoms mimicking an allergic reaction, headaches, rashes, and blood pressure elevations. Section 5. Making Cheese Subsection 1. Curdling The only strictly required step in making any sort of cheese is separating the milk into solid curds and liquid whey. Usually this is done by acidifying the milk and adding rennet, the acidification is accomplished directly by the addition of an acid like vinegar in a few cases, but usually starter bacteria are employed instead. These starter bacteria convert milk sugars into lactic acid. The same bacteria and the enzymes they produce also play a large role in the eventual flavor of aged cheeses. Most cheeses are made with starter bacteria from the lactococci, lactobacilli, and streptococci families. Swiss starter cultures also include Propionibacter shermani, which produces carbon dioxide gas bubbles during aging, giving Swiss cheese or Emmental its holes. Some fresh cheeses are curdled only by acidity, but most cheeses also use rennet. Rennet sets the cheese into a strong and rubbery gel compared to the fragile curds produced by acidic coagulation alone. It also allows curdling at a lower acidity, important because flavor-making bacteria are inhibited in high-acidity environments. In general, softer, smaller, fresher cheeses are curdled with a greater proportion of acid to rennet than harder, larger, longer-aged varieties. Subsection 2. Curd Processing At this point, the cheese has set into a very moist gel. Some soft cheeses are now essentially complete. They are drained, salted, and packaged. For most of the rest, the curd is cut into small cubes. This allows water to drain from the individual pieces of curd. Some hard cheeses are then heated to temperatures in the range of 35 to 55 degrees Celsius. This forces more whey from the cut curd. It also changes the taste of the finished cheese, affecting both the bacterial culture and the milk chemistry. Cheeses that are heated to the higher temperatures are usually made with thermophilic starter bacteria, which survive this step, either lactobacilli or streptococci. Salt has a number of roles in cheese besides adding a salty flavor. It preserves cheese from spoiling, draws moisture from the curd, and firms up a cheese's texture in an interaction with its proteins. Some cheeses are salted from the outside with dry salt or brine washes. Most cheeses have the salt mixed directly into the curds. A number of other techniques can be employed to influence the cheese's final texture and flavor. Some examples include stretching, where the curd is stretched and kneaded in hot water, developing a stringy, fibrous body, cheddaring, 
where the cut curd is repeatedly piled up, pushing more moisture away. The curd is also mixed or milled for a long time, taking the sharp edges of the cut curd pieces and influencing the final product's texture. And washing, where the curd is washed in warm water, lowering its acidity and making for a mild-tasting cheese. Most cheeses achieve their final shape when the curds are pressed into a mold or form. The harder the cheese, the more pressure is applied. The pressure drives out the moisture. The molds are designed to allow water to escape and unify the curd into a single solid body. Subsection 3. Aging A newborn cheese is usually salty yet bland in flavor and, for harder varieties, rubbery in texture. These qualities are sometimes enjoyed. Cheese curds are eaten on their own, but usually cheeses are left to rest under carefully controlled conditions. This aging period, also called ripening, can last from a few days to several years. As a cheese ages, microbes and enzymes transform its texture and intensify its flavor. This transformation is largely a result of the breakdown of casein proteins and milk fat into a complex mix of amino acids, amines, and fatty acids. Some cheeses have additional bacteria or molds intentionally introduced to them before or during aging. In traditional cheesemaking, these microbes might already be present in the air of the aging room. They are simply allowed to settle and grow on the stored cheeses. More often today, prepared cultures are used, giving more consistent results and putting fewer constraints on the environment where the cheese ages. For the blue cheeses, like Roquefort, Stilton, and Gorgonzola, penicillium mold is introduced to the curd before molding. During agings, the blue molds grow in the small fissures in the cheese, imparting a sharp flavor and aroma. The same molds are also grown on the surface of some aged goat cheeses. The soft cheeses Brie and Camembert, among others, get a surface growth of other penicillium species. The surface mold contributes to the interior texture and flavor of these small cheeses. Some cheeses are periodically washed in a saltwater brine during their ripening. Not only does the brine carry flavors into cheese, but the salty environment may nurture the growth of bacteria, which can impart a very pronounced odor and interesting flavor. The same bacteria can also have some impact on cheeses that are simply ripened in human conditions, like camembert. Large populations of these smear bacteria show up as a sticky orange-red layer on some brine-washed cheeses. Section 6. Eating and Cooking at refrigerator temperatures, the fat in a piece of cheese is as hard as unsoftened butter, and its protein structure is stiff as well. Flavor and odor compounds are less easily liberated when cold. For improvements in flavor and texture, it is widely advised that cheese be allowed to warm up at room temperature before eating. Warm up a piece of cheese a little more to 26 to 32 degrees, and the fat starts to sweat out as they go beyond soft to fully liquid. At higher temperatures, most cheeses melt. Rennet curdled cheeses have a gel like protein matrix that is broken down by heat. When enough protein bonds are broken, the cheese itself turns from a solid to a viscous liquid. Soft, high moisture cheeses will melt at around 55 degrees Celsius, while hard, low moisture cheeses such as Parmesan remain solid until they reach about 82 degrees Celsius. Acid set cheeses, including halloumi, paneer, and some whey cheeses and many varieties of fresh goat cheese, have a protein structure that remains intact at high temperatures. When cooked, these cheeses just get firmer as water evaporates. Some cheeses, like raclette, melt smoothly. Many tend to become stringy or suffer from a separation of their fats. Many of these can be coaxed into melting smoothly in the presence of acid or starch. Fondue, with wine providing the acidity, is a good example of a smoothly melted cheese dish. Elastic stringiness is a quality that is sometimes enjoyed in dishes including pizza and Welsh rabbit. Even a melted cheese eventually turns solid again after enough moisture is cooked off. As its temperature continues to rise, cheese will brown and eventually burn. Section 7. Cheese and Language Throughout the history of the English language, the word cheese has been cheza in Middle English and cheza in Old English. Similar words are shared by other West Germanic languages, including the Friesen Cis, the Dutch Kass, the German Käse, and the Old High German Kassi, all of which probably came from the reconstructed West Germanic root Cassius, which in turn is an early borrowing from Latin. The Latin root word Caseus, from which are derived the Spanish Queso, the Portuguese Queijo, the Romanian Cash, and Italian Caccio, and the Celtic root, which gives the Irish Cais and the Welsh Caus, are also related. This whole group of words is probably derived from the Proto-Indo-European word quat, which means to ferment or become sour. 
when the romans began to make hard cheeses for their legionary supplies a new word started to be used formaticum from caseus formatus or molded cheese it is from this word that we get the french fromage italian formaggio catalan formace breton formage and provencal formo cheese itself is occasionally employed in a sense that means molded or formed head cheese uses this word in this sense in modern english slang something cheesy is kitsch cheap inauthentic or of poor quality one can also be cheesed off or unhappy or annoyed such negative connotations might derive from a ripe cheese's sometimes unpleasant odor almost certainly the odor explains the use of cutting the cheese as a euphemism for flatulence and the term cheesy feet to mean feet which smell a more upbeat slang use is seen in the big cheese an expression referring to the most important person in a group the big shot or head honcho this use of the word is probably not derived from the word cheese but from the persian or hindi word cheese meaning a thing a more whimsical bit of american and canadian slang refers to school buses as cheese wagons a reference to the school bus's yellow color people getting their photo taken are often encouraged to say cheese as the word cheese contains the phoneme e a long vowel which requires the lips to be stretched in the appearance of a smile people from wisconsin and the netherlands both centers of cheese production have been called cheeseheads this nickname has been embraced by wisconsin sports fans especially fans of the green bay packers or wisconsin badgers who are now seen in the stands sporting plastic foam hats in the shape of giant cheese wedges this sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the gnu free documentation license available at www.gnu.org slash copyleft slash fdl.html